buongiorno, ciao ragazzi, benvenuti alla lezione di italiano. Come stai oggi? Tutto bene? How is everyone today? I hope you're well. Andrà tutto bene, remember is the Italian message of hope, meaning it will all be all right. Hope you're all managing to get on okay with your work and that the Italian lessons you've had recently have been okay for you. Um, here is your starter for today, okay? So, ascoltate e mettete in categorie, scrivete il numero, okay? So, you're going to listen to the word that I'm going to read out and you're going to decide which category it belongs in. So, is it category A, which is casa, a house? Is it B, which is a person, persona? Is it C, which is a colour, colore? Or is it D, carattere, which means personality? Ok? Allora, numero uno, gentile. Gentile. Numero due, madre. Madre. Numero tre, azzurro. Azzurro. Quattro, felice. Felice. Cinque, nonno. Nonno. Sei, rosa. Rosa. Sette, cucina. Cucina. 8 soggiorno soggiorno 9 zio zio e numero 10 amico amico ok finito allora le risposte ok here we are answers so gentile d numero 2 madre b numero 3 azzurro c numero 4 felice d 5 nonno b Numero 6, rosa, C. Numero 7, cucina, A. Numero 8, soggiorno, A. 9, zio, B. E numero 10, amico, B. Ok? Allora, eccoci sono le risposte. Those were all your answers. Ok, so now you can see which category they belong to. If there were any words that you didn't know or you got wrong, maybe now you can work out what they mean or have a better guess. Allora, fa una pausa. Okay, so just pause for a second, pause the video, and jot down what you think the meaning of these is in English. When you press play, you'll be able to see what these answers are. Okay, va bene. Risposte allora. Okay, numero uno, gentile meant kind. Madre is your mum. Azzurro is blue. Felice means happy. Nonno is your granddad. Rosa is pink. Um, cucina is the kitchen. Soggiorno is lounge or living room. Zio is your uncle and amico is the word for friend. The last lessons that you had were all about migliori amici, best friends. So hopefully that word was one that was still familiar to you. Okay. Allora, il titolo, l'amicizia, l'amore e problemi. We've had a video lesson about this before. Friendship, love and problems. Okay, where you're um, listening and reading about things which are to do with friendship, love and relationship type problems. That's what we're going to have another look at today. We did do some things connected to this in school, but that's obviously a while ago now. Okay, if you remember from the last video lesson, I did leave you with a task to do in between lessons. Um, the first thing was to go back through the video and copy or type out the verb dovere. Okay, the verb dovere meant to have to. Okay, so if you didn't do that or you can't remember it. This is what the verb dovere looks like. So devo, devi, deve, dobbiamo, dovete, devono. Okay, all six parts of the verb in the present tense. And this verb is used um, with an infinitive afterwards. So if you want to say I have to talk, it would be devo parlare. If you want to say you have to play, devi giocare. Okay, so the verb that follows it is the infinitive. That means it needs to end in either are, eri, or ire. Okay. Second part, parte B, copia le frasi. So copy the phrases below and translate them into English. Allora, numero uno, devo sposare un uomo bello e onesto. If you've got your answers, you can go back and check these, but it means I have to marry a good looking and honest man. Okay, un uomo is a man. Numero due, devi studiare il francese. Means, do you have to study French? Numero tre, dobbiamo ascoltare il prof quando lui parla. We have to listen to the teacher when he talks. Quattro, i bambini devono andare a letto presto. The kids have to go to bed early. 
5. Dovete mangiare frutta e verdure means use, have to eat food and vegetables. E numero 6. Finalmente, mia moglie deve prendere l'autobus ogni giorno, meaning my wife has to take the bus every day. You obviously had the option to write some phrases of your own. If you did so, just check now that your verb that came after either dev or devi ended in either are, ere or ire. Okay, otherwise you will have written something that doesn't make sense. Continuiamo allora. Let's carry on. Okay, facciamo un esercizio di ascolto. Okay, allora ascoltate. You're going to be listening now. This listening is called Il mio migliore amico, meaning my best friend. Okay, it's from the textbook that we would use in school. What you have to do is decide which phrase from the left, okay, uno, due, tre, quattro, cinque, matches with the phrases on the right. Okay, so phrase one, it says Cecile è. Okay, so Cecile is. So deciding which thing matches based on what you've heard. Danilo è, so Danilo is. Nonna Eda is, so Granny Eda is. Il miglior amico di Anna è, the best friend of Anna is. And finally, Italo è, meaning Italo is. Okay? Allora, bisogno una penna. So you'll need a pen. You're just jotting down a number and a letter. Okay, that's how you'll do this. Remember, of course, that because this is a video, you can pause, you can go back, you can listen to it as many times as you need to, to be able to get this right. Obviously, I won't be replaying it. You can do that for yourself. And then, obviously, you can get the answers afterwards. Okay, bye. Traccia 15. Allora, Cecil, la ragazza francese e italiana è la tua migliore amica? Simpatica, eh? Sì, e anche bella. Ah, ah. E il tuo migliore amico, invece, chi è? Si chiama Danilo. Non è in questa scuola. È un ragazzo un po' chiuso, non parla molto. Come Marco. Sì, un po'. Anche lui però è molto intelligente. Parla quattro lingue. Italiano, spagnolo, inglese e tedesco. Wow! E tu, Anna, hai un'amica speciale? La mia migliore amica è mia nonna, Ada. È divertente, simpatica, una persona fantastica. E tra i ragazzi non hai un amico importante? Mio fratello Italo. Sì, è carino. Alto, magro, adoro i ragazzi magri. Sofia, tu adori tutti i ragazzi. <laughs> ok, now, you should listen to this a couple of times, there's no way that I would have expected you to do this the first time. Ok, remember, it always takes your ears a few minutes to get used to the speed, the sound, the accents. Ok, so, you will have noticed um, that these were in order. Ok, so the first person that is mentioned is number one, Cecile, and you should have bella e simpatica uno di, okay? So they talked about Cecile being pretty and nice or kind, simpatica. Numero due, Danilo, okay? Danilo è, and they referred to him being chiuso ma intelligente. Allora, numero due è. Chiuso, okay, is a word which you may not have necessarily thought of before in this context. Chiuso is normally on the door, okay, if it is shut, okay, shut or closed. If you're a person who is described as chiuso, it probably means you keep yourself to yourself. Okay, numero tre, nonna Eda, nonna Eda è, she was described as divertente, simpatico, so that is a. Numero quattro, il miglior amico di Anna è, so working out who Anna's best friend was, and she said it was her brother, Italo. Okay, so it had to be C, quattro C. And finally, numero cinque, Italo è, so when she actually describes what her brother is like, Italo is described as being carino, alto, magro. Okay, carino, alto, magro, or positive uh, characteristics. Okay, carino meaning nice or cute. Um, alto, magro, um, she's describing as being quite good looking, tall, slim. Okay, va bene. Allora, continuiamo. Ok, ora vediamo aggettivi, forma coppie di aggettivi contrari. Ok, you're looking for opposites now, adjectives that are the opposite to each other. So, grab yourself a pen, bisogna una penna. Ecco, ci sono le aggettivi. Ok, c'è un esempio, un esempio qua, divertente, noioso, divertente, 
è il contrario di noioso, divertente being the opposite of no noioso, fun, boring, ok? Allora fa una pausa, so take a pause and then work your way through these looking for the opposites and then when you're done unpause the video. Allora ci sono le risposte, allora coppie che sono contrari, grasso, magro, bello, carino, brutto, stupido, intelligente, simpatico, antipatico, aperto e chiuso. E allora in inglese, so in English we have grasso, magro, which means fat and skinny, bello, carino are both ways of saying um, nice, ok, so bello and carino can mean nice or sweet, and um, brutto is horrible or ugly, ok, brutto can mean ugly in terms of the way you look, but brutto can also mean just awful, ok, um, stupido, intelligente, fairly obvious, then we've got nice and not nice, or we would say kind and unkind, aperto, chiuso, meaning open and closed, okay, in terms of a person, if you're quite an open person, um, that's fairly obvious, but chiuso, as I said before, it probably means you're, you keep yourself to yourself, you don't give much away. Va bene, allora, facciamo un po' di lavoro scritto, okay, so a little bit of written or spoken work, your choice, and the task is, descrivi il tuo migliore amico, so describe your best friend. Ok, ci sono 10 frasi qua per aiutarvi, 10 phrases to help you out with the English, ok? You should hopefully still remember a lot of these, they're quite simple present tense verbs, ok? But things that people often muddle up when they haven't had practice for a while. So whether it's a boy or a girl, you would be saying si chiama. Again, a boy or a girl, it's a, you don't, be, you don't need to change the verb. So a quindici anni, he or she is 15 years old. E, when you're describing height, size, characteristics, non è meaning that they are not, a meaning he or she has, for example, a gli occhi blu, she has blue eyes, or a i capelli lunghi, he has long hair, okay? Some phrases underneath which you can use to describe your best friend, so people you get on with, abbiamo gli stessi gusti, if you don't, then obviously put non at the front, non abbiamo gli stessi gusti, Non litighiamo, a phrase we've seen in the past. Parliamo di, what you talk about, what you play, giochiamo a, usciamo insieme. Okay, so some things which may help you out. Um, if you want to test yourself first of all before you do this as a written exercise, then you can do so. Okay, so I will um, just give you a few minutes to have a think about that. In fact, you can give yourself a few minutes. You just pause the video and then come back to it. Beyond that, I want you to just practice talking or writing about someone that um, you would describe as being your best friend. Okay, va bene? E ora c'è un esercizio di lettura, okay, leggete. So read an exercise now called cerco, which means I'm looking for. Okay, these are all Facebook posts. So it says in the instruction at the top, leggi i post del gruppo di Facebook Parli Italiano con me means read the posts from the Facebook group, you speak Italian with me, okay, or speak Italian with me. So very short, okay, each person isn't saying too much about themselves, they're saying a little bit about who they are, maybe what languages they speak, where they're from. The questions that you need to consider are underneath, okay, so all of them start with chi, okay, meaning who, and then chi è, who is, chi parla, who speaks, chi studia, who studies, he a who has. Beyond that, I'm just going to give you a minute to work out what the questions mean, okay? And then when you've had a think about what they mean, you can read all of the posts and you're just choosing which person the questions correspond to, okay? Allora, fa una pausa. Take a pause there. Bene, allora, cosa significa in inglese, okay? So, number one means who is of Italian origin. Number two, who speaks three languages. Three, who speaks English. Four, who studies Italian at school. And five, who has a house in Italy. Risposte allora. Answers. Chi è di origine italiana? Questo è Francesca. Okay, Francesca. Although she says una ragazza inglese, which means an English girl, the next line says mio padre è di Firenze meaning my dad is from 
Florence, okay, Florence being in Italy. Numero due, chi parla tre lingue? Who speaks three languages? It's Elisabetta, okay, she says parlo polacco, italiano e russo. She speaks Polish, Italian and Russian. Numero tre, chi parla inglese? Okay, questo è Francesca, so Francesca, that we've already mentioned, who's living in Manchester. Numero quattro, chi studia italiano a scuola? So the person who studies Italian at school is Martin, okay, the third person down. Um, he says, studio italiano a scuola. Okay, fairly obvious there. And the final one, chi ha una casa in Italia? There are two people that have houses in Italy. One we've already mentioned, Francesca, but also there is Timo, okay, the second one. He says, i miei genitori hanno una casa in Italia sul lago di, Car di Como. So my parents have a house in Italy on Lake Como. Okay, so those would be your answers for that reading. Hai imparato molto o poco? So, after a few lessons on this, let's see whether or not you feel like you've learned lots or a little, okay? And you are going to have to take your time on this. There's quite a bit to work through. So, we'll have a look at the task. It's um, a vocab task to see what you know. So, had you been in school, this would have been a end of unit test that I would have given to you where you would have basically had a vocab section. So, part one, as you can see, it simply says complete the English. If we then have a look at what is underneath, so 30 questions where you needed to write the English. Part two said complete the phrase. So, it was some phrases rather than just words, and you had to fill in the missing sections. And part C was translations from Italian into English. So, you will have this document um, available to you, okay, so you can download this from Class Charts um, and take some time over it, fill it in, um, pause the video now, and then when you unpause it after having done this, you can obviously see how you got on because I'll run through the answers with you, okay? Bene, allora se avete finito, ecco ci sono delle risposte, okay, so these will be your answers. So I'll run through them fairly quickly on the basis that you can go back for any that you've missed. Okay, so uno, I have, due, I am, tre, we have, quattro, he or she or it is, cinque, dark hair, sei, blonde hair, sette, straight hair, numero otto, hazel eyes, numero nove, thin or skinny, numero dieci, stocky, undici, bald, 12, a beard, 13, a scar, 14, nice or kind, 15, educato meant polite, 16, egoista is selfish, numero 17, happy, 18, jealous, 19, sensitive, 20 means too, as in too much, 21, spesso means often, qualche volta is sometimes, then on to a couple of groups of people. I bambini are kids or children and gli anziani are old people. Some verbs now. Amare is to love. Sposare to marry. Ascoltare to listen. Parlare to talk or to speak. 29 is to have secrets. And 30 dire bugie is to tell fibs or lies. Okay. Moving on to the second part. Parte 2. Completa la frase. Numero 31. Mi aiutano se ho difficoltà. They help me when I have problems. So help would be the missing word. Numero 32. We have the same tastes. Numero 33. They always encourage me. 34. They listen to my problems. 35. They don't give me enough money. 36. 36. They don't let me go out every night. 37, they don't ask for my opinion. 38, they lend me CDs. 39, we talk together. Numero 40, we go out together. Partici, traduzione. Okay, so translation section. 41, generally I am shy. 42, I am never unkind. 43, when I was little, I was fat. Remember, ero is the imperfect tense. It means I used to be or I was. 44, when I was five years old, I had or used to have long hair. 
45, my sister is more naughty than me. Okay, or my sister is naughtier than me. 46, my dad is less intelligent than my mum. 47, ideally, I would be more happy or happier. 48, my ideal house would be in the mountains. 49, at the weekend, we always go to town. And 50 is normally we do homework after school. Okay, and that would be a total mark out of 50. So depending on how you got on in that exercise or that test, um, you may think that you need a bit more practice, a bit more vocab practice, in which case um, take yourself back to edgecandy.com, put in the activity code 1C35F and spend some more time revising that vocab. As well as that, just remember, of course, that you can complete some of the lockdown bingo activities. Um, I'd like to see some of you doing this. Some of the younger pupils have sent some stuff in already, but I haven't had anything from year 10. So send some of your tasks in to me. Um, these are the tasks, all kinds of things, whether it's listening, watching, reading, speaking, writing, all kinds of options. Some of them are more cultural tasks. Um, so if you're interested in researching an Italian company, if business is something that you're interested in, then that might be one for you. And um, there's something to do with musicians, footballers. So have a look, see if you can find something that appeals to you and send in what you've been doing. Okay. Um, allora, abbiamo finito. So that's it for today. Uh, grazie mille e buona giornata, buona settimana. Have a good day and have a good week. Ciao ragazzi. Ciao, ciao.